Uh, hi everyone. Tonight I'm doing something I've just got in from work. A lady called Sandy contacted me at the weekend. She had problems with, unbeknown to me, she had problems with a sauce, mushroom sauce. And I thought from the message she sent, it was my sauce, which she was saying had split on her three times. When we had further contact and I asked her what she'd done, I realised it wasn't my sauce at all. It belonged to another YouTube site, someone I actually follow and uh, they're very good. Uh, but I couldn't actually, she told me where to look, I couldn't find the recipe for this sauce. So I couldn't tell her where she was going wrong. So cutting it short, I said to her, I would make a mushroom sauce my way. Um, the only way I know how to make mushroom sauce and take her through it step by step so that she can hopefully this weekend successfully make a mushroom sauce. Uh, I find sauces have to be in balance. The recipe that she gave me she was cooking with was out of balance so I don't know if there was something missed, I don't know what went on but we started from scratch here. Then I suddenly thought okay I'm rushing home from work, I've got it in my head I'll do this sauce we actually have to eat something with the sauce. So I absolutely love, I love a pork steak. So I thought, right, dash into it for us. They've got some really good offers on. Uh, grab a couple of pork steaks and I'm gonna make the mushroom sauce with the pot, kind of to pour over our pork steaks. Let me just show you this offer I picked up today. Everyone tells me off, Waitrose in Salisbury is my corner shop. Literally, it's on the corner where I live. Uh, so it's my go-to shop because I don't get a lot of time. I don't have a lot of money either. So people are misled by thinking I spend a fortune in there. I spend enough, but I don't spend a fortune. I'm a picky shopper and I buy the week's offers. This week we've got, this, there was four in there about five minutes ago. Pork steaks, save a third. They actually cost me, I got four, as you can see they're there. Four pork steaks for £3.69. I also picked up a chicken that is brined and already ready to go in the oven in a bag, which I don't usually buy. That was a nice sized chicken that would definitely um, feed myself, John and my grandson if he's with us for £3.33. And then I also picked up, um, let me get them out and show you the prawns. Save a third, all on the offers counter. Uh, extra large king size prawns, their prawns are absolutely flipping delicious, £3.33. So I have a friend who shops at Aldi, asked her to do a comparison check for me. And Waitrose were coming in, and this is the chicken. There it is, that's actually half price and that came in at um, £3.67 I think it was. Um, but that's a half price chicken. I've never had a chicken because that's not ready to roast. Um, so I felt I'd made some good deals today. So I don't buy everything there. I go to Tesco and buy their specials when the washing powder and things come on and things like that. I try and shop um, as I have to, as everyone, well most people who aren't mega rich have to look around today. So I just thought I'd show you quality made at a cheap price. So that's our steaks, but let's get started on the mushrooms. Don't be put off by some of the ingredients. You don't have to use these, but if I'm making a mushroom sauce, I want the mushroom to be the star. So porcini mushrooms, you don't have to have them in, but I do like a really mushroomy mushroom sauce. What we do with this, this is dried, okay? So what I've done over here, I've put, um, I wrote my recipe down to try and guide me what I'm actually doing here, porcini, yeah, 15 grams of porcini in there. And you just top it with hot water. Now the liquid, we drain this off when they have soaked in another um, five minutes and it's fully softened, they'll be chopped up and they're going with our chestnut mushrooms. And the fluid I'll actually save and that goes in with my chicken stock and that goes in as part of my sauce. My other ingredients, I don't know how many people know about this mushroom ketchup absolutely flipping love this um you can use this in stews perfect for mushroom sauce um and it even says if you want to uh, use it in a mushroom risotto mushroom sauce and enhance your mushrooms this 
backs it up and it is really lovely stuff you don't need a lot don't overdo it though because it can be you can go silly and make things out of balance and good old Dijon mustard I tend to use in most of my sauces uh, savoury sauces red onion finely chopped you don't want great big bits of chunky onion in this sauce one fat clove of garlic it's about the mushrooms not the garlic so don't overdo the garlic folks this is 250 grams of chestnut mushrooms that have been brushed over don't wash your mushrooms they retain water so what i tend to do is brush them over make sure you get all those strange little bits that you buy on um, mushrooms that you buy get all that off and then just finally slice them they're going to render down this is the start of this sauce is where we go now is we're going to sweat these mushrooms to withdraw every ounce of flavor we can from the mushroom and that will be the bed of your sauce okay so the first job i'm doing i have to start um, i'm going to start this sauce off let's form that pan up a little bit nothing aggressive in the way i'm cooking here right okay a splash of extra virgin olive oil or any oil it doesn't have to be extra a knob of butter because i i like to cook mushrooms with butter it gives it so much nicer flavor right the reason i'm not using just butter butter would burn very quickly they absorb that mushrooms burn very quickly if you mix it with a bit of olive oil you don't have that issue okay i'm just going to wait till that's done then i'm going to put on uh, the mushrooms in a minute once that butter's gone down and i'm going to put a lid on it on a very low heat until the mushrooms have sweated down um, and that i will show you at that stage what i'm actually doing with the mushrooms so you've got a good clear picture of where you should be at that stage just get that going like i said at the moment i've got it i'll turn to a little bit for, i don't want this butter to bubble away and become brown butter although today's fashion a lot of sauces are actually made in brown butter that's another story that's another sauce i will tackle that at a later stage okay it's starting to bubble so i'm turning the heat down and that's telling me it's time my onions first go in along with my garlic get just get your um turn it back up a little bit i just want to soften off those onions a little bit before the mushrooms go in and sweat it's only one small red onion guys you don't want you want and the reason i'm using red onion people ask me ask me why i love red onion they're mad at the sweeter they actually draw sweetness into things not i'm not talking a sugary sweetness i'm talking a natural sweetness okay and now the mushrooms so that's just got a nice little bubble going on i'm happy with that and all my mushrooms go in there okay i'm just going to stir it through i'm going to put that on low now just toss that around and i'll come back and stir it in in a minute the porcini are not going in there at the moment i need that to sit now i haven't got a pan lid for that so i'm actually just using the wok lid it does the same job it keeps in as much as it can that's set on the lowest uh, my next job is i'm gonna just move that steak out the way i'm going to with my pork sticks i'm going to actually use a little bit of olive oil just a touch like that over there Don't to touch the brush. Just a tiny bit. Well, that'll do the other side as well. Put that over there. And uh, we've got we got this for the barbecue where we've got a, a camado thing. Um, and this is it's American Memphis style. It's called Three Little Pigs. They are actually really nice rubs. So all I'm doing this is a lighter one. The Memphis one is citrusy. It's good for pork. It's uh, we have a beef one which definitely would fight the pork. So we're just using and just a, a little bit. Oh, 
I don't want a lot because I want the, the natural pot flavours to come through. Okay, I'm going to turn them. So that both sides. These are going into the Ninja. So I'm just grab my. Just, I'm just putting a little bit of oil on one stick and using it all around the three sticks. And the only reason I'm actually doing that is to hold the. Um, so the rub stays on them. It doesn't just fall off the minute I pick them up. These are, they're thin. I mean, uh, we're at a stage where we're trying to actually eat less meat than what we used to several years ago. Right, just gently rub that in and wash my hands in a second. Yeah, that's going to stick lovely. Yeah, and they are, as I say, going in the Ninja. I don't want to put them on yet because um, those mushrooms are going to take a little while. Uh, what I'm going to do next is I will put them in the pan. I'll wash my hands, put them in the pan. Then I'll show you how I treat, how I chop up the porcini and squeeze them. I'll just wash my hands. Right, I'm actually going to try and get all three in one basket because my grandson's with us tonight and I want to try and do chips in the other basket. I don't really want to have to start doing potatoes. Oh, it's going to be squash forks, but I think we can do it. Yeah. Okay, so we've got the three set to go. I'll just get rid of this. Quick stir around. Make sure they're sweating it evenly. Yeah, they're starting to go down. Oh, gosh. Already I can smell mushroom. That's without anything added to them. I've done there is also a fabulous basis for a mushroom risotto because quite often I will just chuck risotto rice into that slap a white wine ah yes that's an missing ingredient white wine that's going in as well a uh, slush of white wine in there and your risotto's away and you get fabulous mushroom risotto um, you can add to that prawns leeks you can play around with things have fun right okay Let's see where we are. We've got chicken stock. We're going to do the porcini next. So I do need some kitchen paper to just dry those out. Yeah, they're soft and they're kind of like a sponge. They have to be soft before you add them to anything. Don't try taking shortcuts with these because you'll end up with pieces of cardboard in your food. And like I said, they, these are luxury, these aren't cheap, but you don't need a lot. And I do believe you can actually pick up um, dried mushrooms off some of the farmer's markets, if you get a good farmer's market, a lot cheaper than what I paid for these. So it might be a case of look around and see what you can get hold of. Right, okay, they're going to go in there any minute now because they can cook down with the rest of them. Just go in there. Right, okay. So these are a lot finer dice than what you what I've done the actual mushrooms because these are your added flavour. You can still do the mushroom sauce without adding these at all. If you're on a tight budget and you think I don't want the luxury element, just don't add them, just give your mushrooms time to sweat and it'll be fine. I just wanted to show you what I consider the best, fullest way to do a mushroom sauce. But as I'm saying, you don't have to. These are the extras. As is the ketchup, you don't have to add that mushroom ketchup either. Are actually creating their own liquid now as well. They're actually looking 
okay i'm going to turn them up a little bit now because otherwise we will be here i always say to sweat really sweat and mush them off 15 to 20 minutes is the shortest time saying that when i've been in a rush i've got good results on 10 minutes um but i think i will actually wait as long as i possibly can before we turn on the steaks right what i'm doing is with the um liquid left from the porcini now what i always say is go careful i see people just tip this in in a minute right i'm going to leave it there i don't know if you can see there's a residue in the bottom mushrooms and these are dried porcini mushrooms Often, a bit like asparagus, can have bits of grit in them, uh, bits of dirt from the forest, etc., wherever they're gathered. They can't get them out because they don't, they're going to dry them, they don't wash them. So when I see little bits like that, as I do with asparagus, I don't use that. I discard that. So don't tip it all in. Just get to where you can see it and stop. Last thing you want is grit in your beautiful mushroom sauce. Okay, so that is a quarter of a pint of chicken stock. I can't recommend these too highly. I've been using them for donkey's years. They are by far one of the nicest stock cubes. And that's what I've used tonight. I've used one chicken stock cube, quarter of a pint of hot water on it. Please don't just crumble a stock cube in. Because what you get is it won't always break down. You might think you've crumbled it and instead someone's going to bite into a piece of stock cube that's stuck together. Take the time, add you whatever water you're adding. For me it was a quarter of a pint, dissolved it, stirred it up so I know that when that goes in with my mushrooms, no one's going to bite into a piece of stock cube. Uh, so just take your time with it. Make sure that, you know, if you want it to turn out well, it's worth spending the time on. Okay, this is coming along lovely now. Oh, smelling fine. Okay, a couple of minutes. I'm going to get my white wine out of the fridge. When you're adding, when I add white wine, or any wine, to anything, I turn the heat up to burn off the alcohol. If you don't do that, you can have a, a, a dish that actually tastes alcoholic in, a, in an unpleasant way. You really need to turn the dish up and let that dish absorb the flavours of the wine. That's what it's about. It's not about having booze in your food. It's a distinct flavour that comes from your wine. It's towards the end of the week. This is not an expensive wine. It's a nice Pinot Grigio secret cellar. Um, it's not from South Africa. It retails at about seven fifty. I think I got it for about five ninety nine. It's great for middle It's a very pleasant wine. Um, it's nothing to complain about. It's not an incredible wine. It's perfect for cooking and then finishing the bottle tonight when we eat this. Okay, so that's coming along. So I'm going to just have a look now. That's sizzling away lovely. Okay, I think we're at the stage now that I can actually say we're going to take it to the next step. So now I'm going to add my wine. And actually, my chops, those sticks, sorry, pork sticks, probably going to take, ooh, and my chips are going to take a bit longer. Hang on, guys, I'm just going to, I suddenly realised, I'm not thinking about the rest of the meal. So I'm just going to put some, I'm using these, just, uh, well, I was using them here, and I use the chips. That's a Okay. I won't be cutting all that out. Right, and you find. Um, I haven't got time tonight to stand and soak my potatoes and make chips as much as my husband loves them. So tonight, I've, I found these at the weekend. I don't normally do crinkled chips, but we seem to be having continual shortages of things. So I grabbed these. Oh my God, they're absolutely lovely. And they're cheaper than home, uh, McCain home fries. So tonight we're having those. I'm just going to run them in the other side of it. And 
chops, which I think will take about eight minutes. So let me think, yes, I can do this in eight minutes. Right, so let's get this turned on. Um, let's do number two. Air fry, the chips are going to take longer than eight minutes. So let's see. I think they'll take about 14. Let's say 14. I can stop it. Um, and then we'll do number one. Air fry. Um, and they're going to take less time, aren't they? I will be using my thermometer. I'm going to be looking about for anything from 65 to 71 in temperature. So let's go 10 minutes. Uh, no, let's go 8 minutes. I might give it another 2. Depends how it goes. Sink. Right. Off we go. That's on. So back to the mushrooms. Start with the show. Whoa, yes, that needs wine. I don't know. Because I've turned the temperature up. Right, I'm, I, I don't wear this, but, uh, measure this, but I would say a couple of tablespoons, okay? So look, there's not much gone from there. There's me plenty for the three of us to enjoy tonight. That must go back. Oh, actually, the chef better taste that. One should always taste the wine before dinner. God, that's very pleasant. Right, back in the fridge before I drink it all. Let's turn that up. I need that to absorb all that for it to all evaporate. Oh, that smells wicked. All right, okay, I'm just going to shove my broccoli on in a minute as well. This is looking good. Right, okay. Oh. Right. Dessert spoon, tablespoon, 10 mils, 15. 10 mils. That's all you need. Mushroom ketchup. Good dollop, a big teaspoon of Dijon. And that's all bubbling away lovely. Stir that in. You can see that wine's now going. You can see we've got the makings of a sauce without really doing much at all. Right now, porcini and chicken stock. I'm going to go careful with this. I don't want to flood it out because it's all because we're finishing in cream. But quite honestly, guys, I don't use shed loads of cream. It wants to be creamy, but not you know it doesn't want to be all about cream. You say it wants to be about mushroom. And it's at this point I need to actually be tasting this sauce. Mm. Too good. If you hate Dijon mustard, don't put it in. I find it disappears into the sauce actually, so. Right, at this point I'm going to do my black pepper. You don't need any salt in here, you use the stock cube. Think of that folks. Stock cubes have salt unless you get no salt bombs. So that's bubbling away nicely. Right, I need to get my head together and think what stage I'm at now. I've got my chops on, which I will turn, possibly. I've got my chips on. Uh, my husband's just going to have cauliflower and broccoli because he's starting his New Year diet. I'll get my meat thermometer out, ready to test my meat. Everything else needs to go away, really. That's going to come down quite a bit before I actually add the cream. I haven't used a thickener. If you want to, you could use corn flour. Uh, this is not a roux-based um, sauce, as you've seen. There's been no roux made, so there's no thickeners in here. The cream may well thicken it a little bit, which is quite often the way I rely on. Um, I will do some roux-based sauces with you. When I've got the right dish for that, I will take you through those stages as well. 
actually in lieu of making sauces. This is kind of, this is your stage where you should be thinking of tasting everything. down because the sauce is going to be ready and you can do this take the heat down let it simmer gentle and then when you want to reduce more you turn the heat up the sauce can wait for you um, so don't panic about it mm. lovely colour mm. you can see where that's browning off there Lovely. So, right, they're now going to get another three minutes. And they will be done. Right, we're back. Um, okay, that stock, it's all gone in there. This is what we've got. Look how rich that is. Look how reduced it is. Okay, just before my chops are finished, I'm adding to this 100 ml cream. Let's see where that takes us. Very gentle heat, just lift it a little bit so it cooks through. And you really have to be a judge of how creamy you want your sauce. I actually like to taste the full flavour of things. I don't want to eat. The more cream you add, the less chance you have of tasting the mushroom. Be aware of that. And that for me, folks, let's try my spoon. Oh, do not add any more cream. Get rid of that spoon in the sink. That is absolutely. God, is it fair to say that's really good? <laughs> right, okay, I've got broccoli on there. That is done. So all I'm waiting for, oh, I'm like, um, the pork steaks, at eight minutes, to stop the chips are sat there keeping warm, they're ready. Pork steaks, no, they needed another two minutes. And the reason I know that is because I thought they just weren't looking cooked enough, but when I put my thermometer in, I hadn't reached 63. I want it just over the 63. I don't want to take it to 60, uh, 71, because it would be dry. I'm looking for just around about 63, 64. Okay, which I'm going to test any minute now. I'm going to shake that around. I don't want to lose that. It's perfect. Turn the broccoli off. Let's just, as you can see, all the edges are going. So let's. It's tricky when you've got a thin stick like this. Oh, go 66. They're done, folks. Right. So I will give them the 28 seconds. Because I did say anything up to 71, so we'll just give those a second and we'll get served up. Ow, chips. Look at those. I mean, they don't even look tasty. But they're crispy and, oh, I, I, you know, I really, really, I'm not normally, I like to do my own things, but these are good. I actually realised I bought his potatoes before this rooster potato and they're actually good as well so right okay so I've got one there mm. they look very tasty one there one there turn that off and sauces like these freeze just be careful when you reheat them. You can reheat them gently uh, in a saucepan, thaw them, reheat them gently, and just reconstitute them a little bit uh, with uh, another tablespoon for cream. But do be, um, do be aware that does change your flavours a little bit. Ah, uh, husband, grandson, Owen. Oh, 
question. Would you like to take a seat and try your pork steak and your mushroom sauce? And give me an honest to goodness verdict. He is the connoisseur. He's very much a Gordon Ramsay fan. Right, where's my wine glass? Absolutely sublime. Sublime. Perfect flavour. Texture's good. Oh, texture's perfect, yeah. It's been cooked perfectly through. Mushroom sauce, absolutely brilliant. Tastes all the mushroom itself. The sauce. That's what I want. I want to taste the mushroom. Would Gordon be pleased with this? He would be 100% pleased with <laughs> this. Well, it doesn't get any better, does it? Let me try. Mmm. You just get some mushroom. That's beautiful. Uh, I hope you try. Yes, it, it takes a bit of extra time, but it's so worth it. It does feel special. Put it on steak as well. I know a lot of people that like mushroom sauce on steaks. It doesn't have to be on cock. Anyway, thanks for watching. Um, see you very soon. Thanks again. Bye now.